Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns. Hi. I'm here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event or webinar or webcast, um, an online show, whatever you want to call us. We're here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but if you're unable to join us, that's fine. On Wednesdays, uh, we do record all of our shows and put them onto the Encompass Live website, and I'll show you where that is at the end of today's show. So you can always watch everything there. Um, we post a recording of the show. Um, if some, anyone has presentations or handouts or documentation, um, that'll be included in the recording page. And any websites or, and things that they go to, any links, um, we collect those as well. Um, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So if you have any friends, colleagues, um, who might be interested in any of our topics we're doing, let them know. Tell them to come and join us. Um, or watch, um, send them to our recording page and watch those. Uh, we do a mixture of things here, uh, web interviews, book reviews, mini training sessions, demos, basically anything library related, we have it on the show. We don't really have much more criteria than that. If it's something happening with libraries or something that could be, could be happening with libraries, we will put it on. Um, we do bring in guest speakers from time to time on the show, but we also have our own sessions here that our Nebraska Library Commission staff do, and that's what we have for uh, uh, with today. My laptop is going a little slow there. Um, today our topic is the University of Nebraska Press Collection and what we have here at the Nebraska Library Commission. So to tell us all about that is um, Mary Sowers just to my left here, uh, the Government Information Services Librarian here at the Commission, and um, Allison Badger, who is the newest employee at the Commission. I was trying to think, has anyone else come on board oh. since? Holly. Yeah. Holly. Holly was after you. Yes. That's right. Okay, I'm sorry. Second to most recent. <laughs> <laughs> Very recent employee of uh, the Our new cataloging librarian here. So um, I will just hand over to you guys to go ahead and tell us all about um, what we've got here at the all right, thank you so much, Krista. We appreciate you mm -hmm. having us on their show t today. Um, a about a month ago, I did a uh, book talk to the uh, Bethany Branch uh, Book Club, um, and Bethany Branch is part of the Lincoln City Libraries um, yeah. group. <laughs> um, and I apologize, got a little tongue tied there. Um, but um, it went so well that um, we were asked to uh, talk about the our Nebraska Press collection here at the Library Commission on the show, and uh, we are more than happy to do so. And uh, in doing our research, I think we've had a lot of fun. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah we have. <laughs> and um, when I interviewed for this job back in October. Um, they had they said Deborah Dragos when she gave me a tour. She's like, oh, and here's our University of Nebraska Press collection. We have a lot of copies of their books here, and I just thought, oh, that is really cool. That's really exciting. And um, as a cataloger, I, I was like, oh, these would be fun to catalog. And and I don't I don't get to create the catalog records, but. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on, and but um, it's a really neat collection. That it is, and uh, I'm always amazed at what I find um, when I'm shelving you know, the, the press books and uh, what I go back for to uh, browse through, you know, on a personal level. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to get started, and um, thought I would. Um, Good. That should be a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Um, here's what we're planning to cover today. Feel free to ask questions as we go along if something pops up and you, you know, uh, it really kind of helps us to go ahead and answer the question as we go along so it's still fresh and our answers are you know, immediate. Um, but here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to go through a brief history of the Nebraska State Documents Clearinghouse here at the Commission, a history of the University of Nebraska Press, Examples of press books uh, in the commission collection, how to find the press books in the commission collection, and uh, University of Nebraska Press and the Nebraska 150 celebration book list. Um, that's kind of an exciting project, and we'll talk about that um, for a couple of minutes at the end. Well, to begin with, I'd like to talk about the Nebraska State Documents Clearinghouse. 
Uh, prior to 1972, there was no comprehensive program in the state for collecting and preserving Nebraska government publications. As it turns out, the uh, a committee in the legislature was tasked and the Library Commission was tasked in looking at other states and what they were doing for uh, preserving uh, their state publications. That's what my first thing I thought was, is that normal that it was so, so recent that we got organized? Like were um, other states? Uh, yes and no. Okay, there were some states out there mm -hmm. that already had done it, but a lot who hadn't either. You know, um, right. all 50 states now have um, mm -hmm. state library collections in some form, some better than others. Yeah. <laughs> Ours <laughs> happens to be one of the really good ones. Mm -hmm. And so in January of 1972, um, a bill was introduced into the Nebraska legislature passed and signed by the governor in March of that year, um, establishing the Nebraska Publications Clearinghouse. And the Nebraska Clearinghouse program was launched in July of 1972. The Clearinghouse um, and its purpose is to house all public documents from Nebraska state agencies, including documents from the University of Nebraska and selected titles from the University of Nebraska Press. The Nebraska Library Commission has been adding Nebraska Press books to its collection since its inception of the Nebraska State Documents Clearinghouse in 1972, with the first books actually being uh, added in 1973. Have we gone back and pulled like older copies, like books published before 1972? No, we have okay. not. No. Um, our collection actually does start with 1973. Okay. Published okay, I was just wondering. Sure. <laughs> Good question, actually. <laughs> yeah. And of the 170 new press books uh, released every year, the Clarendon House collects between 60 and 70 of those titles. So you can imagine that our collection grows very quickly every year. Um, but it's always fun to see what comes across the oh. desk. You know, oh, yeah, right? those titles come to me. I probably get a couple every week or so yes. mm -hmm. and because um, I bring them I bring those records into our catalog and I'm always I'm always really excited when those titles pop up on my mm -hmm. desk it's like when am I going to see this week mm -hmm. and and we'll touch on this a little bit more but we see a variety of books it's it's just mm -hmm. amazing you know books on European history and um, American culture and, and sports and yes yeah. absolutely and uh, like you just said I am always amazed at the variety of books mm -hmm. that um, come from the press um, and that we also receive here at the Commission so mm -hmm. as a result the University of Nebraska press collection is one of the largest parts of the clearinghouse documents collection here at the Library mm -hmm. Commission and growing <laughs> <laughs> So as a uh, short history of the press itself, University of Nebraska Press was founded in 1941 and is a nonprofit, excuse me, nonprofit academic publisher of scholarly and general interest books. The press is under the auspices of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, the main campus of the University of Nebraska system. And the press publishes approximately 170 new and reprint titles annually and has more than currently 3,000 titles in active print. It publishes primarily nonfiction books and scholarly journals in both print and electronic editions and is considered one of the most prestigious academic presses in the country. Um, there are currently 130 academic presses uh, just in the United States mm -hmm. and University of Nebraska Press is considered in um, as prestigious to be mm -hmm. in the top 10 of those so uh, they are very well looked upon. Mm -hmm. The press has very strong publishing programs in Native American studies and Western American history and since 2010 two of the press books have received the Bancroft Prize which is a very prestigious uh, Univer uh, Columbia University prize um, for literature. The press also has uh, a highly regarded publishing program in sports, you know, and well, with the Huskers. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, as a newcomer to yes. Nebraska, I've learned very quickly. <laughs> yes, sports in Nebraska is definitely uh, uh, you know, a good thing. <laughs> Um, Nebraska Press publishes under several imprints, um, including Nebraska Press, Bison Books, which tends to be mostly paperback, but not always, 
and Potomac, uh, Potomac Books. In 2011, the press entered into a publishing arrangement with the Jewish Publication Society. So they are uh, partners with the uh, GPS, JPS, and one of the oldest scholarly Jewish publishers in the United States. Potomac Books, which the press acquired in uh, 2013, specializes in military and diplomatic topics. Mm -hmm. So as you can already see, the Nebraska Press mm -hmm. does have a very wide variety oh, yeah. Yeah. of you know, topics that they publish with, uh, publish about. Yeah, I wondered about the Jewish books when those started coming across my desk. Yeah. And, yes. And it, it wasn't, wasn't until you'd expect. Yeah, right. I'm like, <laughs> Nebraska, Jewish <laughs> books, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not something you would think about, but um, they do seem to be looking for um, partnerships yeah. you know, that they can do that will help the other uh, press, which is sometimes smaller mm -hmm. and uh, maybe struggling a bit. Um, but you know, and then you know, doing the partnership can um, enhance both publishers. Yeah. The press is also, uh, actually the press is best known for its work in Native Studies, Western History, Sports, Anthropology, Geography, American History and Studies, and American Cultural Studies. Uh, they also have uh, many, many works that they've published uh, that are considered creative works, uh, especially with Nebraska authors and Nebraska fiction, um, Willa Cather, Bess Streeter Aldrich, Mari Sandoz, uh, Wright Morris, those are just a few of the well-known names here in Nebraska, but uh, the press does uh, publish a lot of Nebraska authors. <clears throat> Topics that the Clearinghouse collects, because we do collect Nebraska Press books through the Clearinghouse program, we collect American Studies, Natural History in Nebraska, Nebraska authors, Western history, and Native American studies. Because of the sheer numbers of books that the press publishes every year, um, we have to be somewhat selective. Otherwise, we would run out of, uh, completely <laughs> run out of room <laughs> in very short order. So uh, we do have to be kind of selective. But even as selective with, as we are, we still um, okay. try to cover a really wide range oh. of of topics. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like like we keep saying, it's just it's amazing. Yes. It's just the subjects that we get. Yes, absolutely. Scholarly journals that come to the clearinghouse from the press include Prairie Schooner, which I know a lot of you are in, uh, familiar with, Great Plains Quarterly, Great Plains Research, and Middle West Review. And uh, following are some examples of the wide range of titles that the press publishes and the clearinghouse collects. First example, and this is one of the earlier uh, books that I wanted to give you a little bit of uh, just an idea from a, a Nebraska uh, natural history aspect, The Biology of Ground-Dwelling Squirrels, Annual Cycles, <laughs> Behavioral Ecology, and Sociology. And um, it literally is what it says. It is a uh, complete study of ground-dwelling squirrels. Sorry, my ground apologies. Dwelling. Ground dwelling squirrels. Yeah, there's a little tongue twister there. Um, uh, chipmunks, marmots, you name it. You know, it covers it. And uh, I just, you know, thought that was a little bit of a, a whimsical title <laughs> 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 that you might enjoy. Um, one of the best known Native American books that the Nebraska Press has ever published is Black Elk Speaks being the life story of a holy man of the Ogallala Sioux, published in, originally published in 1989. And this is the most famous Native American book ever written. Uh, it is the story of Lakota visionary and healer Nicholas Black Elk and his people during the momentous twilight years of the 19th century. But following that is Black Elk Lives, Conversations with the Black Elk Family. And I've listed the first author from his family, but there were actually five authors uh, who were members of um, descendants of his that got together to um, talk about him and how their famous ancestor shaped their worldviews, okay. um, shaped their lives mm -hmm. even after the fact. 
and reminding us that their famous forebearer still lives in the legacy of his book, Black Elk mm -hmm. Speaks, and through his descendants. And those two books are, you know, just a little bit more familiar, uh, well-known topics mm -hmm. in the Native American mm -hmm. Studies books that the press um, releases. Um, so I just wanted to give you a, you know, a little bit of an example um, to uh, so that you can get an idea there. The next one that I chose to to highlight is Bright Epic: Women and Coeducation in the American West. The Nebraska Press does many series um, of books, and uh, this happens to be their Women in the West series, of, of which there are quite a few titles. Um, this one was published in 2008, and it tells the story of female students' um, early mixed gender encounters at four institutions, mm -hmm. Iowa uh, Agricultural College, the University of Nebraska, <laughs> Oregon Agricultural College, and Utah State Agricultural College. Although land-grant institutions have been most commonly associated with domestic science courses for women, Bright Epic um, actually talks about all the other um, courses of study that are available uh, to women students, female students, including sciences, literature, journalism, business, commerce, and law. I may have to go get this book. Right. <laughs> this, sounds, this, this sounds really interesting. Yeah. Um, before I became a librarian, I actually was a historian. I have a master's in history and from the University of Montana, and my, my thesis focused on women in the American West. So, oh, oh very cool. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, oh, this would be really <laughs> relevant to my own interests. And, <laughs> well, this one happens to still be on my desk in my office, oh, okay. so feel free to stop by. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, also, too, I would like to, to mention that, you know, if you are a library in Nebraska or, you know, even through Interlibrary Loan, anyone can check these books out from us. Um, if, if it's something you don't have in your library, um, you can uh, request it from us. We'll be glad to check it out and send it to you. Or, you know, if you're outside the state, feel free to enter library loan. Oops. A little too far. Yeah. Okay. My apologies for that. Um, this is one of my favorites of some of the more recent books that we've received from Nebraska Press. And it's titled Prairie Forge, The Extraordinary Story of the Nebraska Scrap Metal Drive of World War II by James Kimball, published by the press in 2014. And um, part of the reason I like this book so much is I was on the uh, committee, the nonfiction committee, um, for one book, uh, for the Nebraska Book Awards. And we awarded this title the 2015 Nebraska Book Award in Nonfiction for Nebraska Spirit, and that is from the Nebraska Center for the Book. Um, fascinating story about how during World War II, the United States needed scrap metal for mm -hmm. munitions and equipment, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, um, we were running low. Yeah. You know, uh, to the point where at one point, um, munitions and equipment. Um, was kind of at a standstill yeah. because it was such a shortage. But Henry Dorley of the Dorley Zoo in Omaha and also mm -hmm. at, at the time was publisher of the Omaha World Herald um, came up with the idea of doing a scrap drive. So Prairie Forge tells the story of the Great American, uh, Great Nebraska Scrap Drive of 1942, a campaign that swept the nation and yielded 5 million tons of scrap metal literally salvaging wow. the war effort itself. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating story, and I read most of this. It, it really, it's well written, and uh, just a fascinating account of what, first of all, true Nebraska spirit yeah. is all about, mm -hmm. but at the same time, true American spirit. This is on the Nebraska 150 list, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes. Right. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so next, yeah. um, we are going to move to more press titles and how to find them in the Nebraska Library Com Le uh, Commission collection. And I'm going to turn it over to um, Allison okay. to w walk us through that. Okay. So I picked a couple of more titles to talk about. Um, as Mary said, it's, it's not just um, books set in Nebraska or about Nebraska. It's books um, that are in the West. And I chose Winter Wheat, which was originally published in 1944, but the press republished it in 1992. 
Yeah. And it's set in kind of um, early World War II Montana, um, 1940s, and it's by Mildred Walker. And um, and it's about a young woman who's growing up on a farm who you know manages to find a way to go to college and have these experiences and kind of her struggle between the, this new life and her old life on the farm. Mm -hmm. And this um, was actually a 2003 One Book Montana. Uh, and so it kind of swept mm -hmm. the state in 2003. It was mm -hmm. something everybody read. And, and it's kind of funny because although um, the author kind of fictionalized Montana a little bit, when you read it, you can still tell like where it is in Montana. <laughs> Those of us who know Montana really well, I was yeah. like, oh yeah, I know exactly where this book is set. <laughs> And another title is uh, The American West, A 20th Century History, which is by Michael P. Malone and Richard X. Ulane. And it was first published in 1989. It's been updated, and they've issued a second edition since then. Oh, cool. And um, as I mentioned, I do have a master's in history. And one of the things they teach you is um, kind of how to judge your sources, how to evaluate sources. And one way is um, if you're working with like monographs with books, is to look at the publisher. And so that was how I first kind of came across the University of Nebraska Press was that was one that professors were like, oh yeah, if a, if a book is published by the University of Nebraska, that's a good book. <laughs> that That's a book that you know has been well written. It's been... Um, they don't just let, let just anybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, you're, the, the sources are cited. It's you know, really good quality scholarship. And so this was one we actually used in one of my classes. Uh, and it's it's a good overview kind of of the 20th century West and how it's changed and grown, uh, as the description says, kind of, you know, from 1900 um, up to about, I think, the 1940s, 1950s, that post-World War II and um, era and, and the, the impact of, like, the New Deal and, the, and World War II on the West, that the West yes. saw a lot of growth as a result of that. Very true. And then uh, I chose a third title, and I actually have not read this book, I have to admit, The Course of Empire um, by Bernard DeVoto. Um, it's always been on kind of my to-read list. And this is another book um, that's really highly regarded uh, among American Western historians. Um, Bernard DeVoto kind of, with his books, kind of changed the way um, we viewed the American West, how scholars did prior to that. Uh, prior to like the 1950s, we kind of saw the West as kind of um, through the lens of white men, and it didn't. We didn't really take into account the environment or Indians. Mm -hmm. And and Bernard Devoto started moving that forward to, well, here's what really not what really happened, but here's another way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, he did a series of books here um, across the wide Mississippi, which won a Pulitzer. Uh, the year, uh, year of decision, 1846, and the course of empire, which all talk about different aspects of the American West. Mm -hmm. So, and that brings me to how you can find these books. And a really easy place to search is our catalog, and you just go to the Library Commission website, and then up on the top it says um, Library Catalog. Mm -hmm. And you click there, and you come here, and we use Mandarin as our um, catalog. And Mandarin, like every other catalog out there, has its quirks. So I've got some tips and tricks, uh, which is you need to be very precise when you're searching Mandarin. And that's kind of true of any catalog, but I have found it more so with Mandarin that you can't have spelling mistakes. Um, you can't do, like, just kind of general word, like keywords. Otherwise, you get a lot of yes, a lot correct. of hits. And yes. so I have found with Mandarin, the easiest way to to find items there is to you know pull some words from the title. Mm -hmm. And and I generally have really good luck with that. And you can search by author, uh, last name, first name, title, mm -hmm. keyword. And if you're looking, you just want to know. Uh, all of the University of Nebraska Press books we have, you can search for University of Nebraska Press and you will get a complete list of all the books we have. <laughs> we do have a comment. Um, our, our, our previous catalog oh. librarian is actually on the line. Um, Hi, Emily. Yes, yes. She says, oh, yes, Mandarin quirks. 
<laughs> I'm thinking that she's thinking that's a diplomatic way of describing yes. it. <laughs> like I said, all catalogs <laughs> have their quirks. Mm -hmm. That is very And true. everyone who not just catalogs there but works there has to figure out how do I use mm -hmm. make my system do what I want it to yeah. do what I want. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And these are just these are just a few things I've picked up really quickly, especially the whole like no spelling mistakes. Mandarin, it doesn't do a suggested. No, yeah. Mandarin's mm -hmm. not very forgiving. It doesn't even try and get you to what is close. It's it just says we don't have your title. Correct. Not yeah. yeah. You're like okay, thanks. You're helpful. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so I did do a search for winter wheat in the catalog, and you can see kind of the top left of the screen that's um like kind of the the result list and what you're going to see and then i do have uh the mark view of the record and so if you are you know cataloging or copy cataloging this title you know this is a place where you can come and look for a record and, and you know get some of the basic information to include in the record and you can also get records you can also search for a lot of these books at the library of congress and uh, I found the easiest way uh, was to just go click on the library catalog link on the right there because if I tried searching any other way, I got a lot of results and not necessarily because I searched for winter wheat again. I got a lot of reports on winter wheat and growing winter wheat. Oh, right. I can imagine. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> but you know, and like you know, like Mandarin, you can search by title, um, author. Again, you can search by the University of Nebraska Press and pull up, you know, all the University of Nebraska Press books they have cataloged over the years. Uh, again, you need to be precise, and that, that's what I've discovered with almost any catalog, is you have to be precise. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you get a ton of results. Mm -hmm. And they also have some advanced search features where you can go in and search by year or type of publication and and again, I've got some examples of kind of what the search results look like and then what the record, the mark record looks like. So again, you know, if you're looking for a record, so you can copy catalog, uh, the Library of Congress is a great place to go for that. And you can actually download those records um, using their Z, what is it? Z39. Yeah, Z39 yeah. protocol. Mm -hmm. And I don't know much about that, but. I know a lot of libraries get their records that way or through your vendor. Mm -hmm. um, you should be able to find them through your vendor too. Mm -hmm. So if you decide to add any of these titles to your collection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do we um, do much tweaking to the records once we get them? Um, here for the, for the commission, <laughs> just for commission purposes. I know sure. lots of libraries do do local. I just don't know what. We, we have a couple of local fields we add um, just for doing when we import the records into our system, it's mm. just for doing holdings. Mm. And then yeah. I do add things to the records. Uh, I, I have my own little things I like to add. Mm. You know, I like to add like a contents note if it's not there, mm. um, where I've transcribed the table of contents. Mm. Uh, if a summary mm. is really easy to do, or mm. actually for the summary, I usually go to the University of Nebraska <laughs> Press page. Well, there you go. Yeah, I just well, copy and paste. Yes, yes. Take, it, um, take it from the source. Yeah. Right. And you, I love it when the summaries are there. Yeah, I yeah. know, yeah. yeah. It saves a lot of time for readers. Too. It does. Yeah. As, a, as a historian, mm -hmm. one reason I became a cataloger was I could never find anything in the catalog. Yeah. Or when I did, like half the time it wasn't what I really wanted. And mm -hmm. so that really influences a lot of my cataloging decisions and what I do add to records. And, and I'll go in and check subject headings, and I might add more if I feel like more necessary. And, and yeah. That's pretty much what I do to the records, and then I bring them in, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, kind of back to um, University of Nebraska Press um, here at the commission, uh, one aspect that we are starting to ramp up on is the Nebraska 150 celebration. And as um, many of you know, uh, next year, 2017, uh, March 1st, to be precise, uh, 2017, uh, Nebraska will be 150 years old and, as a state. And so as part of the 150th anniversary of Nebraska statehood, the Nebraska Sesquicentennial Commission, I actually said that right, has chosen 150 notable Nebraska books to highlight for the Nebraska 150 celebration uh, in March of next year. These books represent the best literature produced from Nebraska during the last uh, past 150 years, 
and the books highlight the very cultures, diverse experiences, and shared history of Nebraska. And uh, after looking through the list, um, I thought that the commission did a, a really good job in compiling this list. Uh, many of the books on the Nebraska 150 list are from the University of Nebraska Press, hence why I'm talking about it today, <laughs> and are also in the Nebraska Clearinghouse collection. Approximately 35 titles on the list are also in the Nebraska Library Commission Book Club. Book, you know, I can say sesquicentennial, but I can't <laughs> say book club kit, you know? <laughs> but anyway, approximately 35 titles from the 150 list are in the book club kit collection here at the commission. And to see all of those titles, you can go to um, nlc.nebraska.gov ref book club page. And under Browse Options, you can click on Browse Nebraska 150 Books. Um, we just recently added that little search button so that if you are interested not only in looking at the Nebraska 150 book list as a whole um, by itself, then you can take that list and go over to um, our book club kit page and browse just for those books. So um, then um, also you can visit the Nebraska150books.org for an overview of the, uh, the whole program. Um, they are doing featured books by month that they started just this past April. And uh, so far they have, uh, well, actually, I apologize. I think it's March, March, April, and May currently where they uh, spotlight about four or five books, mm -hmm. you know, just for the month. And then they also have the full list of the 150 titles. So, um, any chance I could get to the internet? No, oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, I thought what I would do is, um, since we are, you know, ahead of schedule here by quite a bit, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, welcome any questions that you all have. I thought maybe I would um, kind of demonstrate where from our website you can go to, to get to things. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you um, our catalog, which is right up here in the top, kind of the top right-hand corner where it says NLC Catalog. If you click on that, you come up with the search page that uh, Allison showed you earlier. And, um, oh, sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. The orange arrow at the top. Oh, there we go. Get it out of your okay. way. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, Sorry about that. <laughs> and now you can see what the whole search page looks like. And then I'll go back and you can see what the whole commission page looks like. Mm -hmm. NLC catalog is uh, up here in the top right hand corner. Um, and an e the easiest way to get to our commission book club kits is to go to collections at NLC from the main page. And um, and you have to hover and let it the, the menu come out and then go over uh, to uh, NLC Book Club Kits. And this is the main search part. So if you know just an author or just a title or if you just want to browse, you know, by um, it, any of that, then you can. But if you scroll down a little bit, we now uh, we have browse options. So you can browse the entire collection. Nebraska related books, and then for our purposes today, we now have the Nebraska 150 books. Are we doing every single one of them? I think, or no? Uh, no. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> no the I don't want to scare our, our Lisa. Our, our yeah. We'd we run out of room very yes, quickly. Yeah. We run very quickly. <laughs> now, the whole purpose of this was for um, our schools and libraries who do borrow book club kits from us. Mm -hmm. um, if they're interested in a title that's on the 150 list, they yeah. can go directly to this uh, button. Mm -hmm and come up with the whole yeah, list yeah, of yeah. everything that's on that list that we have mm -hmm. in our book club collection. And will we be them. adding titles to that list? Yes. We okay. Will be. As yes. we come across that 150 and yes. In fact, um, my boss Lisa Kelly has already started working on uh, trying to fill in some gaps and uh, with some of the titles. I'll, I don't remember specifically what those are, but yes, yeah. that is in process. So we will be adding books to this. Um, and as you can see, um, Black Elk Speaks, uh, 14 copies, you know, that I talked about earlier. That's in one of the book club kits. Um, Mari Sandoz, Cheyenne Autumn, which is a very well-known popular book by her. We have 25 copies of that. Um, a lot of 
uh, titles you're already going to be very familiar with, mm -hmm. like Children's the Children's Blizzard, Blizzard yeah. right? Um, and you know, some funny and a lot of history, mm -hmm. and um, of course, Death Zones and Darling Spy, is, which was the um, 2014, 2015, 2015 yeah. mm -hmm. uh, one book, one Nebraska winner. Uh, we still have uh, many copies of that, and so you can just scroll through the list and find out. You know, so if you're interested in doing something in conjunction uh, with the uh, 150th anniversary celebration at your library, mm -hmm. then this is a good place to start. You know, if you if you want to do a book club uh, yeah, reading, that's a great resource for people trying to do readings and that libraries and they can't get their own like 10, 20 copies yes. of something. Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. So I did want to point that out. And then as um, uh, just to familiarize you with um, the Nebraska 150 celebration, um, it real easy, uh, any 150.org uh, gets you to the Nebraska Statehood 150 website. Um, there's uh, information uh, about how it got started, um, who the uh, Sesquicentennial Commission is, um, Friends Foundation, who their staff is. Um, they have a whole page uh, for events and, and programs um, and initiatives. They have the Statehood Day celebration, so you can find out what the latest is for the actual celebration. Um, they have, they're doing a one book, one state, um, which is a program to provide free books about Willa Cather and Chief Standing Bear to high school and elementary schools with um, hmm. corresponding curriculum. I thought that was mm -hmm. kind of a neat thing. That is. Yeah. And um, then to um, get to... I was going to try to. Are you trying to find the list yes, on here? I was like trying to get to the. Um, let's see. I think it's books or something like that. Yeah, so I apologize. Nope, you did. Yes, the I did. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's books instead of booked. And it's not showing up there either. So, anyway, let me go get back to my PowerPoint because I know it's there. One, oh, books.org. It's all one word. Okay. Uh, I apologize uh, for this, folks. <laughs> you have to be precise, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought the internet was supposed to be more forgiving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, yeah. it depends on which, uh, which one you're using. Well, it's like the catalog. You can be really broad and really general, but you're going to get a lot of results. And... That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Okay, here we go. Um, I did find it wasn't quite as easy to get from the main Nebraska 150 page to this page, but now that you know what the URL, you know, just, just use direct, this, yeah. just go directly. And um, this is the main page so that you, you know, about who they are, you know, what, what their overview is, uh, who the selection committee was, uh, partners, how to get in touch with them. And then uh, the next one over is uh, the Nebraska books, you know, that were chosen, an overview again, their mission and selection criteria, um, the featured books, and I apologize, um, I had it wrong. I had, think I had it right the first time. You did. Um, yeah, their featured books are April, May, and June of this mm -hmm. year, so they've already released the June selections. Um, and just to give you an idea of what that looks like, um, the first one that they featured, which is definitely a classic here in Nebraska, is A Lantern in Her Hand by Best Streeter Aldridge, and um, you know, complete with the picture and a really nice synopsis. And they have done um, a variety of books. This one happens to be the Solomon Butcher um, uh, as a photographer, phot uh, photographing the American dream. Again, a very classic book uh, here in Nebraska uh, by a well-known photographer. Um, Pioneer Girl, Cycle of the West by John Neihart. Um, so, yes, lot, 
you know, that that's how they go about featuring. Um, now, um, I wanted to go back to the main books page so that you can, and by hovering over Nebraska Books, you can see they have um, a list for 100, all 150 Nebraska books. And if you click here, um, again, Nebraska 150 books, and I'm just going to open it yep. this way. And it's just a simple PDF. It's yes. really easy to print mm -hmm. off. Yeah. Yes, it is. And um, and it is um, organized by genre first and um, gives you title, author, publisher. And, you know, this is where we figured out that, you know, um, a lot of the books on this list are from the University of Nebraska Press, you know, which obviously yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, uh, place of publication, copyright, and um, I, think, I think there's some one other one. But anyway, yes, uh, lots of information. And uh, so feel free to browse and, um, you know, then uh, visit the Nebraska Library Commission page to, um, you know, try to, you know, if you're interested in just reading a book, feel free to, to find it in the catalog. Or if you need a book club kit, then feel free to go to the book club um, page and uh, browse what we have uh, of both Nebraska Press books and the, um, the Nebraska 150 books. Um, a couple of other things I wanted to mention, um, starting probably this fall um, here at the Commission, we're going to be doing a display um, in our new books area. As you come in the front door of the Commission, um, and we have a new books display. We've uh, designated um, you know, from here on out until the celebration that we're going to do a Nebraska Press um, and Nebraska 150 display, oh. you know, so it, it's mainly Nebraska 150, but because so many of the press books are included yeah. in that, you know, that'll be a main focus yeah. as well. So um, if you're ever, you know, downtown and want to stop by at the commission and, and kind of browse through what we have, then yeah, our library um, is open to the public. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Our library Downstairs, is open yeah. from eight to five, Monday through Friday. So if you're downtown and uh, come into the commission, feel free to stop in and browse and ask us questions or, you know, we can take you back to the Nebraska Press collection and so that you can browse back there as well. Um, that the press collection is definitely a more browsable collection <laughs> than a lot of our other uh, uh, state Gover agency documents. Government documents, yeah. Yeah, not really for browsing. Yeah. No. yeah, and it's certainly a lot more fun. Than, uh, it's, to, to yeah, browse. I mean the titles as you're walking through, it's it's just it's a, we keep saying it's so amazing, but it, it yes. really it really is amazing. Did you want to talk about your your blog that you're going to start oh, doing? Yes, actually I'm going to do that. But one other thing okay. I wanted to tell you, just again, so you just know what a wide range of variety the press publishes as well as what we have here at the uh, commission. Um, I have found books and you know like you saw that I mentioned before I found the book on ground squirrels you know mm -hmm. but we also have bird books you know birds related to Nebraska or by an, a Nebraska author, sports uh, especially football mm -hmm. and baseball. Uh, we have American and American West uh, studies including the frontier world of uh, Doc Holliday. Uh, which actually is, you know, a very interesting book. I was, I, I kind of sped read through that one. It was really interesting. And one of the most fascinating series of books that we have here at the commission in the press collection is called um, um, First Wings into Space, uh, which is a series. Um, and uh, we have almost all the series and it's, it, talks about uh, the whole space program and there's probably I want to say there's about eight or ten books in the series now and every time we add a new one I'm just fascinated oh you yeah. Know, that, I've, yeah I've, I've come across a couple of those as they've as they've come to me and and so librarians were always asked 
Well, you must read a lot when you're on the job. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, and, and you guys all probably have been asked that. So you must yeah. read a lot. And there are times, I probably shouldn't admit this, but <laughs> where a book comes across my desk and I, mm -hmm. I will start flipping through it and I'll start reading mm -hmm. sections. And it, yes. I did with one of these because it talked about astronauts who died before they had a chance to go into space, who've right. been a part of the original Mercury and Gemini programs, and then one of the other books, this is not related, was, but I want to put a plug in because I loved it, was Smoke the Donkey, which was just oh, recently yes, published. Yes, absolutely. And that, it's such a fun book. It's such a fun mm. book. That That's a really great book. That yeah, was one where I did spend yeah. a lot more time reading right. it than I should have. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not even the cataloger. They only come to me for, you know, after they've been cataloged and put into the the clearinghouse collection, um, but I get to shelf them. So yeah. um, I'm kind of like Allison. I do spend more time reading some of those than I should. <laughs> I think even but. more we get too many that are put on our um, to be read list. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I want to read this one and this yes. one and this yeah. one. Exactly. This one. Yes. And then you just don't get to them all. Yes. <laughs> so you have to sneak it in when you have yeah. a chance at work. And that's right. what I say. It's work related because <laughs> this is part of our collection. And you should know the collection. That's yes. right. I should Absolutely. know the collection because of moments like this where we have a chance to plug the collection. That's right. And, have, and talk with patrons or, you know, whoever comes through the door. So. Um, other things that I wanted to mention. I, you know, I already did mention, um, you know, some of our well-known Nebraska authors, but, um, you know, other Nebraska literature, um, other fiction, poetry, you know, we have Ted Kuzer and uh, um, other authors that I wanted to mention were uh, Mignon Everhart. Uh, she considered the Agatha Christie of Nebraska, you know, for her mystery writers, um, early 1930s, you know, was uh, her time period. Um, Rose Wilder Lane, uh, obviously well known, not as much about Nebraska, but some, you know, so there definitely some relation there. And then another uh, well known uh, poet is William Clefhorn, uh, Clefcorn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I uh, wanted to be sure and, and mention those. And uh, um, as Allison mentioned earlier, um, as a result of both the book talk that I did at Bethany Branch Library and the research that we've yeah. done, you know, for this presentation today, um, I am going to be starting a uh, blog that will appear on the Nebraska Library Commission blog uh, every, or I, I guess I should say a regular blog post that um, is going to be on the Nebraska Library Commission blog. Um, and Alice and I are going to do this together, so we're going to be switching off back and forth, mm -hmm. and we'll each pick titles that stand out to us, and uh, we will showcase one title yeah. uh, probably once a week. You know, um, at the at the very least, a couple of times a month. Yeah, yeah. It just it depends on you know how much time we have, but uh, do be sure to check in. You know, when we post those, so that you can see what the newest and and latest and greatest mm -hmm. is from the Nebraska Press. And I think yeah. Mary's going to try and do some of the more recent titles. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm going to do some of the older titles that maybe you're not as familiar with. Kind Correct. Of those those classics. Um, like Winter Wheat, which I'm fond of because it's set in Montana. <laughs> right. I like that they do the reissues of things. Yeah. Like you were saying, they only started from when they first initiated this in yes. 73. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, well, you know, there's plenty of good literature from before that. Oh, yes, yeah. um, absolutely. So it's nice when they reissue something and then it can end up in the, in the collection. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, be sure to um, check in and, and uh, see what the latest yeah. is that we've decided to pick and, and showcase. Mm -hmm. And I think that's all we have for today. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Nobody asked anything during. Yeah. Um, just, you know, Emily commenting about Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> she, she has her, her, her experiences with it. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And she's over at the uh, UNL, the University of Nebraska Law Library now. Yes. Oh, okay. So, right. yeah. She's moved on to um, academic. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them in if you want to. Anything you want to comment on. If you've read any of these books, know any of them, let us know. Um, yeah. And if you don't, um, you guys know where to find us. You know where we are at the commission. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure, yes, um, Mary and Alice would be happy to answer any questions you have about any of the books or getting hold of them. Absolutely. Or exactly. As what's coming. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't look like anybody has anything urgent they're typing, so... If I could then, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, sure. I will mention one other thing. 
about if you decide to request one of the books. Um, oh yeah, how how yes, do that? There there are a couple of ways you can do this. If you want to request something from a book club kit, um, I'm just going to go to the Nebraska 150 list since we're talking about it. And for example, you want to request this Black Elk Speaks. Um, it it did link to the picture on Amazon and the summary so that you can you know read what the summary is about. But if you want to actually request this kit, you can click on the button and then fill out all of your information. And just as a reminder, this particular form is not for interlibrary loan. This is strictly for book club kit requests from directly from the Library Commission. Mm -hmm. So uh, just fill out the form and then uh, down at the bottom, send. And if you think you've made a mistake before you send, you want to start over, click clear. But you know, once you're done, feel free to, to uh, send that to us. That comes mm -hmm. to us by email and uh, we will um, book that, uh, you know, depending on uh, what the booking schedule is and certainly someone will be in contact with you very quickly you know, about that. Now, so far as... Uh, there's no cost for these either. No, there is no for them cost. to ship them back. Yes, that's yeah. correct. There is no cost for requesting a book club kit or anything from our collection. Um, the only cost to you would be once you receive it and are ready to send it back, then it's up to you to, to uh, pay the shipping costs. You know. um, but if you want to request a book from the main collection, I'm going to use Black Elk Speaks as another, as, as you know, just an uh, example, just because it's so We have easy. our favorites. And mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And now, as you can see, just from the basic list that popped up, uh, one mm -hmm. of our copies is already checked out because of the red square, um, that, that part. Is, so it's one of the older uh, copies. And, you know, I just realized I have the wrong year for the original publication of Back at Black Elk Speaks. It goes back a lot further than I thought it did. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have other copies. We have a very a much older edition um, and uh, newer editions. And I'm going to click on the 2004. But the easiest way to get to the full record is to click on Details. The full record comes up. And then if you would like to request this book from us, this is the button you choose to request loan. This again comes to us by email, but it has the title that you're requesting and fill out your information and then at the bottom send request. And this helps us a lot because it makes all the information streamlined. We know exactly what you want and we know exactly where to send it. And it yeah. automatically pulls in the book info is great. Yes, it does. Yes, so we no are very grateful for what that. What they mean? Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> and also, too, depending on which one you click on, it is that specific uh, edition. You know, oh, right. If so that's it's, important yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. So, um, Anyway, that's the easiest way to get um, either University of Nebraska Press books or any of the books from or you know, items from our collection. You know, just do a search, um, click on the details, and then do a request alone. So, we just have some comments. Um, we have someone on the line. Uh, Catherine Kelly's here from Lincoln City Libraries. Just oh, hi, Catherine. Was, yeah. Um, saying thanks for sharing information on this wonderful Nebraska publishing resource. Hurrah for UNP and happy 70, 75th anniversary oh. to the University of Nebraska Press. Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. And, and they're yeah. featuring books on their website. They're doing like, they're picking out like their, their favorite or best 75 that they're doing in mm -hmm. honor of. Yeah. So. Separate of the whole Separate of the whole thing. 150. Yeah. So. Yes, nice. Yes. Well, and, you know, it's kind of like uh, two people having birthdays, you know, really <laughs> close to Christmas, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, you know, have um, have their own celebration. And, you know, I think that's a good idea. So, yeah, just so, happens to fall at the same time. Yeah, ab absolutely. <laughs> yes. So feel free also to go to the University of Nebraska Press uh, website um, to browse to, you know, get an even better idea of what they are all about and all of the hundreds and thousands <laughs> of books, you know, that they um, publish and, you know, they have a new this month, you know, and you can see just from that, you know, what a wide range of 
uh, books they have. Um, they have featured journals and bison books and just a great resource um, here in Nebraska that's available to us. And there's so. ordering information here. Yes. And they also have links to their blog. Yes. Um, which I found was, that was where I found out about the whole, they have, they're doing like, their, their 75 favorite titles or, yes, or whatever. Exactly. And, and uh, here's the link for read our blog. And, uh, and there you go, yeah, 75 yeah, yeah. significant yeah. books. Yes, so exactly. Great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a whole series. This is the book that Allison was talking about yeah. earlier in the yeah, space yeah, flight yeah. series, uh, Fallen Astronauts. And um, I'll, I'll be honest, I can't wait to read that one. <laughs> it's what I read of it was really, inter really yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, the space flight series you would think is would be kind of technical and, you know, hard to get through, mm -hmm. but it's they are all very well written, and I've enjoyed, you know, uh, browsing through them um, a lot, you know, since I discovered them. But uh, anyway, um, that's our presentation for today, and cool. uh, we appreciate okay you having us on the show Chris great yeah thank you very much guys um yeah um obviously we didn't any other urgent questions come in while you were explaining how to do it. <laughs> um, you just did the perfect job of getting everything out there for everyone so right. thank you everyone for attending someone did say thanks to the NLC for today's program yeah um we're happy to do it of course we're always trying to share what we do all different things we yes. do here at the library commission absolutely um and um of course you know we're going to be talking more here about the whole 150, Nebraska yes, 150. Yes, absolutely. So I think this is, I believe this is the first time it's been mentioned on the show so far this year. I don't think oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, just, just hey, things well, people have done that's commission-related had not yeah. come up in the end. But I'm assuming we'll have more information as it's coming up to what yes. we're yes. doing. I'll have some yes. people on the show about that. Mm -hmm. So so look ahead to those. Yeah. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. It is being recorded, and we posted to our website later this afternoon if YouTube um, cooperates with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, you go ahead and type in um, uh, Encompass Live. i bring you to the Encompass Live website. There we are. Um, luckily, Encompass Live, nobody's called anything that, so you can just Google us and you find our sites and a whole bunch of other <laughs> links related to <laughs> us. Um, So you see our, our recordings end up here on the website. Um, you can also go to just Encompass Live searching our site. Um, and right beneath our upcoming sessions are our archives. Um, this is our archives going all the way back to when we first started the show, which was in January 2009. So um, yes, some of the information may be old and maybe you consider outdated, but it's Historical. It's arch archival. It is. I'm not. Nothing's ever going to go away. It's there for whenever it was. You know, whenever it took place. It, it's important to know where you've come from in order mm -hmm. to know where you're going. And also, too, it's a great resource. You know, I remember something about being said on Encompass Live, and mm -hmm. and I need to go find more about that again. And, yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's a great resource. Um, so let's see. I think last week we had yeah. Um, last week's show uh, recordings. This is how this week's will come up too. The recording will link you out to the YouTube um, video for it. Uh, the presentation um, will be on our slide share. The Nebraska Library Commission uses slide share for posting that, and links will all be collected. Um, the couple yeah, what three or four well University of Press the 150 pages and whatnot right. um, mm -hmm. in our delicious account. <laughs> So that will all be there for you guys. Um, and when it's ready, I'll let everyone know, send you an email that is posted and ready for you to view. Um, so that will wrap, that will be for today's show. I uh, hope you join us next week when our topic is creating a blended learning space in your library. This is uh, specifically about in school libraries, K through 12. Um, Beth Caves, who's at our ESU Educational Service Unit 7, I'll be on to talk about Nebraska has a new just started last year, 2015, a blended learning initiative that they're doing mm -hmm. in the schools. And mm -hmm. she's going to tell you how that's going on, what's going on in the schools to create this um, type of classroom um, for for the students out there. So it should be very interesting. Uh, so I hope you join us for that and any of our other upcoming shows. You can see we've got our June dates up there. Um, there are five Wednesdays in June, and I'm still waiting to confirm one, so you will see there's just four listed, but it'll be there when I get, <laughs> when we get things figured out. <laughs> um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, head over to our page there. We'll link to it and give us a like. 
I post, um, I announce when new shows are coming up, when a recording is ready. Um, as you can see here, I did a reminder this morning to log in. You can log in on the fly if you forget to pre-register for the show. doesn't matter. We post the login link, and you can just do that. And we, we add someone to do that today, actually. So it happens almost every week. Look, there we are. So. We're famous, Mary. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> So you'll see, you'll get updates to this just a couple times a week. It's not very busy, you know, just keeping people <laughs> apprised of what's coming and when our recordings are ready and um, what's going on in the show. So if you are big on Facebook, do pop over there and um, give us a like. Other than that, let me double check our questions. No, we're good to go. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you very much, Allison and Barry. This is great. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. you. Go out, yeah, out there. Check out all the everything in our collection. All right. That wraps up for today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.